Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Cross Culture. Right here, we're going to explore once again um, how culture and religion come together. And today we have an episode that I think is going to be blasphemous. Yes, not from our end, but in regards to what we will be watching. So thank you for being with us. We praise God for this wonderful opportunity. And we praise you as well uh, as, well, we don't praise you. We thank you for being with us. And this is our third episode of Cross Culture. And we are so delighted that you have decided to stay with us. Uh, today, as I said, we're going to be touching on something very interesting. But I want to invite you to go ahead and subscribe. Just hit that subscribe button. This is brought to you by New York Conference. And Cross Culture is a program that is brought to you by this wonderful conference and this wonderful Lord we serve here in upstate New York. And without further ado, I would like to say welcome to our co-host, Pastor Martin Celaya. Martin, how are you today? I'm doing good, Pastor Reynolds. Uh, I, I'm very glad to be on this uh, episode of, uh, of Cross Culture. And, uh, um, you know, uh, also for our listeners, right, they're kind of noticing a, a, a slight change in your voice. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not due to purity. It's due to you, you are, you, you are sick or, or getting over your cold. Right. Um, Amen. So we're so glad that, that you're able to, <clears throat> to be on here. And we're also glad for each and every one of you that are listening to us, um, and watching this episode live, uh, share it for, to your friends, follow us. Remember on all our social medias, right? New York conference on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, on, on YouTube as well. And, uh, um, it, it, we, we are hoping that today's episode is going to be a blessing. So, uh, let's, let's have a word of prayer. Oh yes, please. I, I like, I like the, the, the pun that you use, right? Uh, you know, we worship, uh, you know, worshiping you, but in fact, we're going to be talking about that today because someone it slipped, it slipped. I said, we praise you. No, but I think <laughs> what we're going to talk about is so heavy on my mind right now that I just said it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. And uh, we're going to uh, react to another clip of a, of a pastor who, um, who uh, he, we're just going to let you see it. Yeah, Don't. yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's a word pray. of prayer. Let's pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, I'll, I'll pray for you. Uh, I'll pray on this okay. occasion because I know that your voice is, is a bit, uh, uh, you know, wonky. So let's, Thank you. Uh, let's bow our heads. Uh, dear Father in heaven, Lord, as we now um, not only dive into your word, Lord, uh, but listen to this message, this false message, Lord. Help us to see it through the lens of scripture. Lord, we mm. pray for our listeners that they too may examine everything that we say and everything that is said. That way, the name of Jesus may be uplifted high. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, here is... The video. Uh, now, the video, uh, you might have been seeing it uh, on your social media, right? Uh, here is a pastor. I'll, I'll find out more information on the on who the pastor is. But he said a statement that is very controversial. That a lot of Christian YouTubers, uh, Christians on TikTok and social media are reacting, and so are we. So let's uh, give it a listen. And before, before, before you play it, just as they say in the news... The content that you are about to hear may be offensive. So <laughs> listen to it. There you go. All right, let's listen. God worships me. Can you say that with me? What if God worships me? A God who worships me is quite the statement. I know. But follow me. Now, I get it. We've started to worship a very big, heteronormative white Jesus that we constantly thank for standing between us and a mean God. But really, really, who, what, when, and why? Worship has become so God-centered that it risks the subjective colliding of our own things, our biases, etc. What if worship is us? on the mountain of transfiguration. This space where God spoke that God was well pleased. This place where God spoke about God's son in such a way that the light shone on him and God looked and said, wow. What if worship is Genesis three and eight that says when God says, where are you? And who told 
you that you were naked? Who told you that there was a flaw in your beauty? The God who meets us and keeps confirming that who we are is good enough. What if that's worship? We declare that you are God that worships us. So, <clears throat> um, let's, let's, no. let's come back here. No. <laughs> I mean, that is blasphemous. I, I'm about to, to leave this studio right now because, I, I mean, what? What? Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. No, 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 no. Uh, I've, I've, uh, what is it? Uh, ah. I reacted like you too when I first heard this. Um, and, and I, I am 100%, uh, on, on, on the same side as you. So I, I just want to recap some of these things that this man said, right? Uh, first of all, he said something that should be red flags to those of us, right. That are reading the Bible, that are listening and trying to discern things through the Bible. He said, we, we've been exposed to this heteronormative. Uh -huh. Now yeah. that from, a, from the very beginning is a very woke-ish view of God. So, so that was from the get-go. You should already know the direction that this uh, message is going. All right. Uh, then he, he, okay, well, let's, I, I got, I got four things that we can break down, Pastor Reynolds. So let's go with the first one. Heteronormative. All right. That's basically saying that, that hetero, right. Heterosexual, uh, 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 one man, one woman, right. Uh, which is biblical. Right, you tell me if I'm wrong. Right, uh, he mentioned Genesis, so 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 let's let's go to Genesis. Right, let's go to Genesis chapter one. Let's go to Genesis chapter one, and we're going to be examining right this this uh, claim that that this uh, so-called preacher um, has said. So Genesis chapter one, right, uh, and and let's go into um, verse twenty six. Verse twenty six, right, about the creation of man. Um, and, uh, for those of us, for those of you who are watching, please follow along, right? We want to present stuff that is straight scripture. All right. Amen. Amen. So this is the heterosexual norm that he is claiming that the Bible presents. So let's see if it's true or not, right? Within the context of scripture, right? Then God said, let us make man in our image. Now, those of us that, that know, right? Man is humanity, right? Correct. Um, not just men as the male, according to our likeness, let them, all right, uh, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creeps on earth. So God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God, he created him. Male and male female. and female. He created them. So, mm -hmm. heteronormative. I would say yes, because that's how God created it, male and female. Now, I'm pretty sure he, 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 uh, he goes into a little more, right, uh, uh, of what that actually means. Uh, um, but we got to make it clear. God created man, humanity, in two genders, male yes. and female yes. from the beginning, right? So, so th that's clear. Right. So, but well, to some are, people, apparently to some people. Yeah. Yeah. But again, right. We got to understand the context of where this man is, is, is talking about because heteronormative, especially within the culture context, right. And here on cross culture, we're examining where the, the church, the, the biblical belief and the, and, and the culture they cross. Right. Um, That's right. Heteronormative towards the, in terms of the culture it's a negative, not a positive, right? It's, it's a negative because uh, it, it's defined only as two. But as we know, right, in the culture that we live in, in, in the gender fluid cultural, uh, sexual, uh, free culture, people don't like hearing what Genesis 1 talks about, right? That God created man and woman, male and female. There is mm -hmm. no other option, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Pastor Reynolds, you, you tell me if I'm wrong. Am, am I mis, misquoting scripture? You know, what, what do you got to We got to say? No, you're not. But first and foremost, I would like to say that I do not know 
this pastor by the name of Jermail Witherspoon. Okay, I yeah. have not listened to the entire sermon. Um, I am not his friend. I don't know him, him personally or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to use my Stephen A. Smith impersonation in a sense. I think this guy should be banned from talking about the Bible. I mean, uh. banned from, from preaching, banned mm -hmm. from anything. I mean, where do you get this concept? But we're going to get there in a second. Uh, yeah. In yeah. regards to the duality of God's uh, nature that many people want to apply to God, I think that is something that is coming back up. And then they want to apply that duality in regards to gender also to men. So they read the text in the wrong way saying, well, if God created men, male and female, then they assume that then we can choose. Mm. He created men with two sides, male and female. And then you can choose if you're going to be male and female. Hence why you have a lot of people today who are saying, it is okay for a Christian to be transgender. It is okay for a Christian to choose what they want to be or mm -hmm. their identity uh, can change according to what you have in your mind. But then when you go to the second creation account in Genesis chapter two, at the end, you also find that the verse says in verse 25, the man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. So he's not describing one being with a duality of gender. He's describing two beings. And when you go back to the text you read, even towards the end, it has the word them. And he's not one of those modern pronouns where one person says, call me they. No, this is referring to a plurality of people. He's referring mm -hmm. to two individuals, Adam and Eve, who were created by God. And I was not in creation. I was not there present. But the Bible, if I believe in God, I need to believe in the Bible that he established two different people with mm -hmm. two different genders that were able to fulfill the task that he gave them. He said, fructify and multiply. There was no other way to do so than to have two people with two different genders connecting in every way and being able to fructify and multiply. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I do not want to say that, um, you know, if you're struggling with your identity, you are lost. Or if you are confused about your gender, you're lost. You can come to Christ and he can transform you. Mm -hmm. But what we have in the Bible is that he created male and female. That's what we have. That's true. And, and, and thank you for making that clarification. And, and yeah, absolutely. Right. We're, we are attacking this view that 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 this uh that this man said uh, uh that god worships us right that 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 that's the idea now he said that the bible right we have been presented christianity has presented a god centered worship right uh, let me amen let, let, me, let me let me replay this 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 video that way we can we can we can hear it we can hear it from the horse's mouth, right? And before you play it, I would like to point mm -hmm. out also that he brings mm -hmm. a gender issue and a race issue. Mm -hmm. He said that, uh, you know, the Jesus that has been presented to us, interceding for us is a white Jesus and this and that. This guy is, is on a mission to just bring stuff that sounds good, that mm -hmm. sounds appealing, that sounds trendy. Mm -hmm. And I know that Jesus wasn't white. Uh, he was someone from the Middle East. So, but my, my thing is, if we portray him as white, black, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, the important thing is that Jesus did what he did for us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm not looking to see uh, his, his, his stone skin or how he looks like. I'm just satisfied by the fact that he died for me. So Amen. I just think he's looking for reasons. He's looking for a reason to be relevant. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's the problem. And that to me is human-centered Christianity. But I'll let you play it for us to see it. All right. So we'll listen to it one, one more time and, and then we won't listen to it anymore. Uh, so this is what he says, all right? God worships 
me. A God who worships me is quite the statement. I would say it's a heretical oh, yeah. statement. <laughs> let's, let's keep going. I know. But follow me. Now, I get it. We've started to worship a very big heteronormative white Jesus that we constantly thank for standing between us and a mean God. But really, really, who, what, when, and why? Worship has become so God. Wait, wait, let, let, let's, let's back up. He said that again, right? That this Jesus, is giving me sales, man. Jesus stands between us and a mean God. Now, this is obviously in reference to the fact that the God of the Old Testament is often portrayed as a mean God, a God full of wrath, a God full of, of, uh, um, of, of anger, right? That, that, yeah. that he, he sends plagues, he sends uh, locusts, he sends armies to punish people. Now, all right. Um, you know, if, if, I, if I just do a random Google search of God's love in the Old Testament, I'm pretty sure, Pastor Reynolds, I'm pretty sure that I can find not just one, but plenty of verses that talk about God's mercy, God's love, God calling Israel, right? Uh, a text that comes to mind is in, is in Deuteronomy, right, where... where where uh, uh, the the call that Joshua that D Joshua gives the people of Israel, right, God's people, right, it's not only to to choose today who they were served, but he says, "Look, me and my house, we were served the Lord." But then on another and another book, uh, um, I, forget, I forget which one that where Moses gives his final speech, he says, "Look, choose life. God wants to give you life. Choose yep. life." Yep. Right. That doesn't sound to me as a as this mean God that Jesus had to come down and stand and almost defend us like, like he's defending us from a bully. I, I don't know. I, what do you think? I agree. And I would say that I have no right. And I'm not thinking here that this guy was not called to be a pastor. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that he should be banned in the sense that if you have someone just talking about his own opinions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we've seen thus far four statements that are anti-biblical. Mm -hmm. These four statements are confusing his followers, confusing the people. Hence why we have a Christianity today that it's so confused and trying to adapt to culture normatives. And mm -hmm. we see here that he's, uh, as you will point it out, that he's talking about an angry God. It is true that we see the manifestation of God's wrath in the Bible, but mm -hmm. God's wrath in the Bible is a wrath of abandonment. He abandons you or he abandoned the people to do whatever they wanted after he offered a choice. Mm -hmm. And when they chose uh, to go to the wrong side, then he had no other uh, method of abandoning them or saying, you cannot walk with the people. I need to cut you off. And you find that repeatedly in the Bible he gives them a chance. Exodus chapter 31 and uh, 33, actually. Uh, okay, you build this golden calf. Go ahead. Make a choice. Are you go with God or mm -hmm. not? No, mm -hmm. we're not with God. Okay. Sadly, I have to do this because we're marching together to Canaan. Then you have the same thing even after um, the, 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 the great, uh, you know, disappointment that they had. And they started criticizing and saying, no, we, we cannot go into the land. The land is too dangerous for us. And again, Caleb and Joshua were on the right and they called the people to serve the Lord and they said no. So you have to understand that God's wrath is not just wrath saying, oh, I don't like you, I'm going to kill you. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's God saying, I need to protect my people from being contaminated or, or corrupted by these other ones that mm -hmm. are completely wrong. So this idea that God is a God of wrath, it's con contrary to what the Bible says, Absolutely. that God is love and all through the bible we see him running after men running after men not worshiping men but running after us <laughs> trying to save us absolutely you know and and i would agree and there are two verses that come to mind jeremiah 31 3 that says <clears throat> then the lord appeared to us in the past saying i have loved you with an everlasting love 
I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. No, man, I, I, I don't know. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to clearly read what the text is saying to you. Number one, God's love is everlasting, right? It's continuous. Number two, he has drawn you. He has wooed you, right? Yep. With an yep. unfailing kindness. See, our love fails. Our kindness fails. Our mercy fails. Our forgiveness fails. But God never fails. And this is something Amen. also, right, that, again, this is from the Old Testament. And, and, and he mentions Genesis, all right? And he mentions specifically Genesis chapter 3, where it talks about that Adam and Eve, right, both take from the fruit, the forbidden fruit, right, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, he mentions, and, 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 and we'll, we'll finish the video, and then we'll continue with, with what... Uh, what we are saying, but I want, I want you to pay attention to what he mentions, right? Uh, and, and then, um, let me see, uh, why is, oh, here, listen, listen, listen to what he says. Give me one second here. For some reason, it's, it will come. So he's quoting as you find it. He's quoting the part of the story where God is looking for man and asking, where are you? And then he asks, what have you done? Mm -hmm. But let's listen to his practical application to this. Yeah, his, his interpretation, let's see. God-centered, that it risks the subjective colliding of our own things, our biases, etc. What if worship is us on the mountain of transfiguration. This space where God spoke that God was well pleased. This place where God spoke about God's son in such a way that the light shone on him and God looked and said, wow. What if worship is Genesis 3 and 8 that says when God says, where are you? And who told you that you were naked? So I'm, I'm going to stop it there. <clears throat> So it's interesting, right, that he mentions the fact that in Genesis chapter 3, um, again, in the garden, where God comes after, not comes after, but, but asked a question to Adam and Eve after they fall, right? Uh, where are you? Yeah. Now, any scholar <clears throat> will tell you, any correct Bible teacher will tell you, this is not God acting in a authoritative way, right? Uh, this is God coming after humanity. The fact that God doesn't have us come to him, right? The, the, the text doesn't say, and Adam and Eve came to God and they confessed their sins. No, it was God walked, met, met. Uh, and the verse says, and they heard the sound of the Lord, of, of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Verse 9 says, Then the Lord called to Adam and said, Where are you? Mm -hmm. All right. See, <clears throat> this is not a, a, a hide-and-seek game, right? This is not, oh, God, let's, let's run because he's going to punish us. No, it, it, it says that they, 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 they felt shame because they were naked. Now. This is not saying that in there, like there, there's, I, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to grasp how this guy came to the conclusion that that statement, I where are you, <laughs> is God also worshiping humanity when it's clearly <clears throat> it's not, it's, it's, it's God wanting to asking, right? When a mistake is done, look, he came, he walked. He came to us. And this we see all throughout scripture. God being the initiator. God being the initiator in the plan of salvation. God being the initiator when we've done wrong. God being the initiator when, when we need light to shine amongst our darkness. God is the initiator. Right? And I, would, I, I don't know if he's confused about the fact that Genesis chapter 3 and then verse 22 says, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Mm -hmm. So 
I don't know if he's confused by this text that is just saying, now that they have tasted the fruit, mm-hmm. now they know what is evil, and now they know shame, and now they know this and that, so they know good and evil. It's not saying, when he's saying, now he has become like one of us, it's not saying, now he's God. I do not know from where he got to this conclusion. But then yeah. you see that in reality, God is looking for them, but for them to be able to worship him, not for them to worship themselves or for God to worship them. Nowhere in the Bible do we find any reference, not in the mountain of transfiguration, not in the Genesis story, where God is worshiping absolutely anyone. He is not. And his conclusion to me is out of place, is Mm -hmm. out of order, and what, what the Bible is telling us right here is that God, in verse 21, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. In other words, he, he made righteousness for them. He's putting his righteousness on them. He's saying, I'm bigger than you, so I'm going to cover you. Mm-hmm. That is what he's saying. So this whole thought of God worshiping us, again, is anti-biblical. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most blasphemous things I have ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. And for people then to be accepting his teaching and just saying, yes, yes, yes. This guy is just using the Bible to interpret whatever he wants. There's no way, there's no nothing in this text that implies that by asking, as you were saying, Pastor Martin, by asking this question, he's worshiping Adam and Eve. Yeah, there, and scripture is clear, right? Only one being is deserving of honor and glory. Uh, and we want to share a few of those verses with you because it's important for us to, again, when we hear such things, such claims as this, that what if God <clears throat> worships us, right? Uh, or 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 that God is a woman, which we'll probably touch in another, in another, another video, right? Yep. We have to go straight to the scripture. We have to actually see what it actually says and 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 then put it, Put those claims to the test of scripture, right? For example, Psalm 63 verses one through four say, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My th- my soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. And in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory because your, again, steadfast love, love is better than life. My lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hand. So two things off the bat. Number one, God's love is everlasting. But number Mm -hmm. two, because of that everlasting, unfailing love, he alone is uh, uh, deserving of worship. There's there's another one. There's another verse here and and that I I, want to share that uh, also comes from another Psalms that we more than likely know, Psalms 42. Psalms okay. 42 verses one through five. We're not gonna read them all, but I wanna read the first few few verses, right? This is David uh, 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 giving a description of how he wants God in his life, right? It says, as the deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for you, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before you? My tears have been my food day and night. And while they say to me all day long, where is your God? <clears throat> These things I remember as I pour out my soul. And, <clears throat> and again, right, let's go, let's go to the last verse. Why are you cast down all my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. I shall again not praise myself. <laughs> not praise another human being. It says, I shall again praise him, the subject being God, my salvation. Come on, Martin. How can you be, how can you be uh, rejecting the teaching that what if God worships us? I mean, just by me saying it, I feel super bad. And this guy had the audacity to go out there and say this in front of a church. And now he just stands by his point So much that even his worship team follows him. But I think he has not (laughs) read, I don't know, Mm. Exodus chapter 20, when the Mm. Bible says clearly, you shall not make for yourself an idol 
in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. Mm -hmm. You shall not bow down, verse 5, to them or worship them. Again, or worship them for the third time or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Verse 7 now, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. So I think he's uh, misusing the name of God by putting God under us. Because when you worship something, it's something that is greater than you, it's higher than you. So by just asking the question, what if God worships me or worships us, we're placing God under us. And Mm -hmm. his whole sermon is about what if God is placing himself below us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why he uses Genesis chapter 3 as an example saying, oh, God came running Mm -hmm. after Adam and Eve. And he asked the question, hence why he's under Mm-hmm. Or how about, um, I think he's not, he has not read the text that says that Jesus was for a while when he came to earth, was made uh, below the angels for a little while. But we, according to David, were also made a little lower than the angels. So we don't deserve any praise. We don't deserve oh, any no. worship. And oh. the Lord himself is saying, if you worship anything that is not me, That is wrong because I'm the creator. So that by extension implies that if God is saying, do not worship another human being, from where do we get this idea that he will worship another human being? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense whatsoever. And then some people get it twisted also when they read Psalm 82 and verse 6. It's It's a text that Jesus quoted in John 10 and verse 34. The Bible says, I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the most high God or of the most high. Hmm. That word gods has a lowercase g in the Bible. And it Hmm. comes from the original Hebrew. It's saying, or he's using the word Elohim. That means Lord or God. Hmm. What he's saying is, you know, the judges and rulers of Israel are gods, but they're the sons of the most high God, meaning I have placed something that is of me in them in regards to authority. And Mm -hmm. that's what happened to Adam and Eve. In regards to authority, the Lord gave him authority over creation, but the Lord did not make him equal to him. And even Mm -hmm. in this text, you see the difference. He's saying, I've made you rulers, like if you're me, but I'm still the most high. Yeah. And even to Moses, he said, when you go into Pharaoh, you're going to be like Elohim to him. You're going to be like God to him because I placed my words in your mouth and in the mouth of your brother. Mm-hmm. So this thought, this concept of us being in a place where God needs to worship us, it's not founded in scripture. No. And whoever takes his text of Psalm 82 is twisting the text because God is just referring to the ability that they had to judge given by God and to determine some cases and some things that were happening happening among the Israelites. You know, and and I definitely agree. You know, I, I could even add um as we as we wrap up, right, this this reaction to this absurd idea, this blasphemous teaching that God worships us. Paul even warns us, Romans chapter one, verses 21 and 23 says, For although they knew God, They did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and Mm -hmm. their foolish hearts were darkened, claiming to be wise. They became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, animals, and creepy things. And we can keep reading right in that, in that chapter. Again, when we, put ourselves or anyone else in the process, I'm sorry, in the place of God, yep. not only do we fall into idol worship, we <clears throat> begin to think ourselves more than what we really are. Some people begin to think themselves that they themselves are God. Some people think that they 
uh, know better than God. Uh, some people think that God worships them. Family, uh, as, we, as we close our, our time here with you, don't be misled by these absurd ideas, these false teachings of, of, of God, of, of, of who God is. Number one, the Bible is clear. There's only one, one God that deserves honor and glory. That's right. And that, one. Is, that is the Lord God Almighty. Uh, the, the, the creator of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, you know, and, and that is Jesus, the, 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 the son, that is the Holy Spirit, right? The triune God, the Godhead only alone deserves honor and glory. And number two, we shouldn't look at ourselves as God, compare ourselves to God, or let alone claim such nonsense as as saying god worships us because number one his word never gives us that claim we might think that we are gods right lowercase g but right there's another verse that says okay if you are god right uh, uh, uh add yourself more time to live if you are god right right heal yourself none of us can None of us here on earth can. Some might claim, but they can't. Only the God of heaven has that power. Only the God of heaven deserves that glory. Pastor Reynolds, uh, to close us off, any final thoughts? Well, uh, I would would like to ask a favor from you. If you could play, please, the last part of the video where the worship uh, leader comes up and he confirms what the pastor just said, because I want to give my closing thoughts in regards to that point that to me is very dangerous. All right. Let's, uh, let's see the, the, the rest of this video and when the worship team comes in. Thank you. Who told you that there was a flaw in your beauty? The God who meets us and keeps confirming that who we are is good enough. What if that's worship? We declare that you are God that worships us. That's how much you love us. That's how much you desire us. That's how much you are for us. Or when we step into your presence. Stop it. Stop it. That's it. Thank you. Um, all through the Bible, I find the teaching that we were unworthy of anything that God did and has done for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, We are not worthy of his sacrifice. We couldn't live up to the covenant that we signed as humanity. Hence why Jesus had to come as a man. And here we have these guys completely rejecting what we see in the Bible. I don't know if you recall the time that one of the prophets in scripture received the visitation from an angel. He bowed down. Mm -hmm. to worship the angel and the angel said no don't do Mm -hmm. it i'm I'm just like you i'm I'm just another created being so just worship god just worship that or who is not created yep to me that's the best statement we have to just say that whatever we saw here today in these videos is completely wrong i'm not saying that pastor martin or myself we are more spiritual more important, more knowledgeable, more uh, spiritual than this guys that we just saw. But when something is bad, wrong, and blasphemous, we have to point it out because the danger is that many times when a pastor speaks, people take it as if it is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And now you have the entire church being fooled in order to just concur with the pastor and now even the worship leader is saying, in a very hushy tone, in a very nice way, you are the God who worships us. And they said he has convinced his followers of an anti-biblical teaching. Hmm. Worship God and no other one. How hmm. can you worship yourself? How can God worship beings who are imperfect, that created nothing? That all we do is destroy God's creation and have no power 
even to transform ourselves, there's no, nothing, there's nothing in us that deserves worship, but there's everything in him that deserves worship. Amen. Amen. And, you know, uh, uh, again, right, we, we, we want to leave you here with this, that only God alone deserves worship. Uh, Psalms 95 verse 6 says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us near before the Lord, our maker. And, uh, and with that, uh, we'll wrap up uh, today's uh, episode of, of Cross Culture. Uh, this is uh, episode three, right? Um, three in our, in our reaction videos. Please let us know, by the way, in the comments, what else you guys want us to talk about, a series that you want us to begin, some questions of scripture that uh, maybe you need some answers to, and we'll try to get to them as well. Uh, and again, follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on um, on YouTube, right? Uh, and we'll let you know uh, as soon as Cross Culture jumps into like Spotify uh, and, and the other areas of, of, of social media. Um, but uh, for now, let's let's finish off with a word of prayer. And we hope that today's message uh, was a blessing to each of you. Uh, Pastor Ronos, can you close with, with a prayer or you want me to do it since I know like you're... you're I can pray, voice. I can pray. All right, All right let's close. <laughs> thank All you. Right. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to go back to scripture and realize that there is no other God like our God. And mm -hmm. as you said in your word repeatedly, um... Every knee shall bow down and worship before the one that was glorified, which is Jesus. Um, every tongue will worship Jesus. Every tribe will worship you. And there's nothing in us. Even though this preacher said that we are good in the way we are, and in our own skin, and this and that, the Bible says completely the opposite to that. The Bible says that there's no one good, not even one. So we recognize that we're not good and that we need the only one who's good, as Jesus said, which is the Father. So we turn to you, Lord, and we ask that you will also extend your grace and your mercy to Pastor Witherspoon and his congregation. Bring the truth to them. It's not that we have all the truth, but you do. So please, Father, touch your hearts and allow them to find truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless each of you from uh, Pastor Martin, Pastor Reynolds here in the New York Conference and Cross Culture. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.